Norska. You've got zero money, everything's on fire, and the other side is here to make your life hell. 0.7% of the player base in five years if you complete this campaign on very hard or legendary. I'm going to attempt it without losing, and if I do, I have to restart from the beginning. Welcome to my 100 hour journey of madness. If you're going to enjoy this, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get a thousand subs by the end of the year. So it's turn one, and what you want to do is go raiding stands to reduce your upkeep, uh, move towards Longship Graveyard, upgrade to get those juicy berserkers, because they're absolutely incredible against low armor targets, which Bretonia and the Empire have. Uh, and so in this situation, you want to move towards the captives, which gives you melee attack and melee defense. And you want to squeeze out 300 from these guys. Don't get in line to them because they always get battered. But the fundamentals of this one is since Carl Franz is going to confederate like crazy. You want to kick his butt as soon as possible. So you want to be moving towards him as fast as you physically can do. So in this situation, we're going to want to attack Longship Graveyard, and we need to make sure not to get Pyrrhic, because the way Warhammer 2 handles experience, uh, it depends on the result of the battle, so close would give you more experience than Pyrrhic. And in this situation, uh, since we're against the clock, if we don't get to the Empire roughly around turn 25 to 30, they'll confederate like crazy, and it's part of the victory condition, same mm. with Antonia. So we have to be really, really careful and ensure that we get a close victory or above. I've done this battle a million times, and this is effectively how you win it. Boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh, bop! Pow! The banner on screen now completely changes everything, and I'll explain why. Usually to get to Terra you have to partake in the absolute RNG fest that is Norska in the early stages of the game, because you can want to get to that mammoth that Varg has. But we know as a fact that early on either Throg or Nuggle Firings will confederate each other. Nine times out of ten it's usually Throg that wins, but if Throg does win it changes the dynamic massively because it'll affect Varg's ability to get to a tier 3 settlement by turn 10, thus giving you the ability to get access to mages and weakens early on, but good news, there's RNG to counter that a bit of RNG. If Throg attacks the Norsk Dowie, he'll be preoccupied and he won't fight Varg due to it. It's the same thing with Kislev, and uh, if he fights as well Throt, there's RNG I've seen where that happens, uh, but the absolute certainty is that Hellfire Tribe will confederate Bjornling, it's just a matter of time until they do. Uh, but in certain use case, it can take up to like five to six turns, uh, but this also means that Hellfire Tribe can mess with the RNG of Varg. Varg is like a beautiful summer day. You love Varg because you want to confederate them. They are your gate to get early game advantages um, because it gives you that tier 3 and the mammoth. Uh, so in the 100 hours of Legendary Norska I have done, absolutely nothing was certain. Everything was different. Everything changes. If you played 10 campaigns, everything would be different because there's so much RNG involved and uh, you have to learn to roll with the punches. Um, thus, this is the reason why the banner solves all of my problems. But we don't have the mage. But the beautiful Leif Gulbranson, uh, which is the Vanna Helmlings, can be confederated depending on the RNG of what Rakath does to them. If he wipes out their army and a settlement, you'll usually be able to confederate them and sometimes get 3,000 from it. This also gives you uh, a metal mage, which enables a couple things. One, it, it allows you to have the ability to keep Rakath happy by using hero actions on Marienburg, plus you get levels from this, and it gives you the ability to deal with damage uh, to armor targets in the early stages of the game, as Searing Doom is a fantastic bombardment spell in the early stages of the game, and it'll be the best spell you'll have access to for quite some time, until you get your Fire Mage rolling. So the plan is simple, on the turn 4 we want to go attack Longship Graveyard to get more experience because the faster we can get to Fearsome Warriors now, the better. We've got Norse Resilience to enable us to replenish uh, nicely while in enemy territory. We'll uh, check Doomkeep, there's military presence still there so we know they're not moving just quite yet. Check Vanna Hylings to see if we can confederate for the Metal Mage, not yet. But now we want to start recruiting Marauder Berserkers, it doesn't really matter what general you get, but that wraps up turn 4. Recruit more Marauder Berserkers, and then next up, check Doomkeep. They're now moving, because there's no military presence there, so now we need to uh, make sure that we get another sack off on Longship Graveyard, because it matters all for the experience. And what we need to do after that one is start moving back to ensure that we can defend our settlement appropriately. And keep in mind, the faster that we can get the Marauder Berserkers inside of Wolfric, the better, because he can reduce the upkeep of them. So we're going to now move back to defend to confederate scaling. So nice and simple, put the Marauder Berserkers into Wolfric. And then what we want to do after that one is get rid of Sorin, we don't need him anymore. Plus recruit 
Marauder Berserkers, as you can see now, and then that's simply end of turn. Recruit more Marauder Berserkers, wait for Scaling to come and attack you, and then what you want to do is, if you can delay it just a little bit, this enables them to upgrade their infrastructure so you can demolish it for extra income. So we need the experience, so what we're doing is we're going to be pushing up with Wolfric uh, towards these trees, and what I'm going to do is make sure that we have the 25% movement so we can encamp for the melee defense and leadership. Uh, so it's quite significant, and then what we'll do is try and take out scaling as soon as possible. So, anytime you have the option to take melee defense and melee attack, damage mitigation is always king, so to get the melee defense, what I do, since I saw in Doomkeep that they are still in here, we're going to move towards them to try and get them engaged into combat. But you can see there's a guy, Olaf Ackmaster, is hanging around the Ice Drake Fury, which is making me exceptionally nervous, because if you don't know, like we mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video, if we lose a single battle, I'm going to have to start from turn one again. So, obvious reasons, I don't want to be doing that. So on one of the best reasons as well about raiding is you get experience while doing it when you're in enemy territory. So we've leveled up here as well and you can see Bellman is for is here for some reason. I have never seen scaling behave like this. This is something that is completely off script even after 80 hours of doing maybe over 50 restarts or something ridiculous. And I've never seen this before. That's the beauty of North Korea in a nutshell. But we can see that Vidmar is here as well, so I'm basically trying to bait out Felman to attack me while I'm in encampment stance, because it'll be an exceptionally easy win, because I've got the mentioned earlier leadership and melee defense buffs. So he does engage, but he's got two armies this time. Uh, but since we're in the encampment stance, we'll have a, a favorable order resolve, and we should easily take this one. And we're going to take the money, because Norska is just dirt poor all the time. So you may be thinking to yourself, yes, form confederation, but this is just where it becomes even more stress-inducing because I have more garrisons, more settlements that can be attacked, which would make us restart. But lucky enough, we have the Unhelmlings here that we can actually confederate. And it looks like, yep, we have the best RNG of confederating them, which is the 3000 I mentioned earlier in the video. And then what we'll do is just demolish everything. There's tier two buildings in here, so we're gonna get a good amount of cash. And here is our hero. We're gonna go send him off uh, we've got the hero, which is huge, and you have to abandon it in this sequence or you don't get the money. So here, since we have a minus 17 public order here, uh, we're going to have to start abandoning uh, settlements. Uh, since we're abandoning the one over, around Rakath, so, you know, so we don't annoy him and he doesn't attack us, uh, we're going to get devastation, um, and we're going to get the debuffs to public order for demolishing and abandoning settlements. So basically, it's pretty much guaranteed we're going to get a rebellion. So now we're going to have to make sure that we're protecting our last settlement here. So we have to move and demolish everything, get the rebellion, and you can squeeze out tons of experience from rebellions because they spawn three times. So for the sake of min-maxing, I'm going to talk Varg at this stage. The only reason for this is Hellfire Tribe are not currently at war with them, and they have a tier three capital city, uh, which is the Varg camp that's over there. So what I'm doing here is trying to bait them to come to me. And I'm going to use this settlement as a sacking settlement because it will bait them to come defend it. It's kind of a similar vibe to what Ikaclaw does. He constantly sacks something. And apparently we've just seen the Warriors of Chaos here. Yep, Norsk's campaign is beautiful. It's full of RNG and I absolutely love it. We're going to get a uh, replenishment. This random event also made it so I had to abandon all the settlements. I tried to befriend Hellfire Tribe so I wasn't attacked by them as well. So we sack Nuggle for a plane again to get some experience and we get a Talisman for Preservation which is absolutely massive which completely changes the course of how I will skill Wolfric up as it effectively makes him significantly tankier and so I'm going to go into hard to hit now. So before the theory was if I go into the blue tree I can get access to utility, I can reduce the cost of my army so I'm a lot less pressured to actually be proactive in certain elements and it can uh, you know, allow me to be uh, as fast or slow as I need to be on the turn but no, now we've got that talisman preservation. We're going to make him as strong as physically possible. In this situation, you can min-max rebellions if you were to attack the army, fully kill the lord leading the army, and also weaken the rest of the army just to make it easier to fight them again. And effectively, what a rebellion does is it recovers over three turns. And if you keep killing the lord, you get increased money and experience. So we're just trying to min-max experience, and as we mentioned, we're going to be leveling up Warfrick as tanky as possible. So we're just going to keep funneling and fighting anything we possibly can do but generally speaking this specific tribe Olaf Hilmerson always takes terrible fights so he either fights Kislev and gets absolutely battered he fights Karakadrak and gets absolutely battered or he attacks Throt and gets battered and you can see here the confederation is giving me access to uh, a tier 3 settlement so this is impossible to get to 
by normal means of growth yourself. And we've hit the jackpot. Here is where the Fire Mage is going to be recruited. Here's where the Weirkin is going to be recruited. But we have to be careful as these settlements can be attacked at any point by Kislev. So we have to make sure to get it done as quick as possible and demolish them. Varg is unfortunately being confederated, so they're no longer a sack target for experience. And we're also going to abandon this settlement so Krakadrak doesn't attack it. And then what we want to make sure to do is build up diplomacy through Rakath and Throt. So skip ahead, this is turn 16. We're going to get ourselves the Knowledgeable Fire Mage. Granted, the Infernal Dominance Mage would be a little bit better. But we're going to level up the Metal Mage to get diplomacy with Rakath as well as experience. But something really unfortunate happens. We get a critical failure, which will change how we have to play this campaign. Uh, quite drastically because we need that metal mage to do a lot of work in the early stages of the game. So skipping ahead, we're going to recruit an Infernal Dominance Weaken alongside another one because uh, Weakens are effectively some of your best bruiser type units and these guys can solo absolutely tons of stuff. And since our mage critically failed, I'm going to have to abandon everything because generally speaking, a wounded mage will respawn on your capital. But if you have no settlements, it'll respawn on top of the Legendary Lord, aka Wolfric. And we can see that we have Leon is right next to us, because we're moving down, moving towards uh, Altdorf to attack it, because we want to shut down Karl Franz as fast as possible. So Leon does make the attack. What can you do against a ton of archers? In this situation, since we don't have any magic, we have just melee units, which is Marauder Berserkers, it's most likely going to be a war of attrition here. But the lucky thing for me is the map is full of trees. So, let's see what we do to win this battle. Into the trees and make sure that we can get all of our units away from line of sight of the trebuchet and the archers. So they focus on specifically Wolfric here. Trebuchet will hit them. And also we have these units here specifically designed to kill uh, Leon as well. We have the anti of the spears, the frostbite of the chariots to slow him down, and the armor piercing, well, damage in general of the wolves. And then what we want to do is just bait these guys up for the sea fang, and you can see exhibit A there, and then this is a juicy exhibit B. <laughs> yeah, look, 300. We've destroyed uh, a large threat early game. Obviously, Leon will come back, but this is the reason why Norse Resilience is also so effective, because we can replenish while in enemy territory as long as we're encamped. Uh, but yeah, we did a lot of damage to Leon, so this is him going to be licking his wounds for a while. Uh, we killed the majority of his high tier units, so that's all that really matters really. And then what we want to do, since we got Glittering Scales, which is absolutely awesome by the way, the more melee defense the better because he effectively will be insanely strong in siege situations if you just get him on the wall because he's got perfect vigor as well if you trade into it. So we're making him tanky as possible uh, by going into armor, which is really useful in the game. I've got a video on how it works, so if you want to watch that, by all means do so. And as we can see, since we abolished all of our buildings, our mage has spawned on us. But now we will take attrition if we move anywhere because we have no territory. And now what we're doing is moving all our mages down so we can actually get them into the army because there are a lot of power there. And this is us just moving towards Cal Friends to take out Dorf. So walking by Marenberg does two things. Rakath likes us for trespassing, but also we don't want to fight them, so we're going to move away from them as soon as possible. We have to always have 25% movement to encamp, so that's what we'll keep doing. And so uh, we'll keep moving, and uh, what we do is spot something that actually changes uh, something quite significant here. This is something I've never seen before, and once again, moving 25% movement. Cal Franz is at war with Boris. Toddy is being attacked by Cal Franz, and so I was like, okay, Let's have a look and see what we can do with this. And it's your daily kick in the nuts avalanche in the Empire for some reason. Uh, right before we're going to be fighting some really important battles, but we take the armor because it's at least impactful. And also one thing I want to mention is you can see my uh, mages are getting levels because they're spreading corruption. And also you can see this guy got from level 1 to 3. And that's purely because of the fact that he had experience from corrupting things. And I want to show you this really funny thing. I made Toddy my vassal in this campaign. It made me laugh so much that I was able to do this. We squeezed out tons of money from him as well, but I had Toddy as a vassal. The main reason I checked this is because I was going to fight Karl Franz anyway. Generally speaking, what I do in diplomacy is try and leverage it as much as possible. And since I've, I have somebody that I can speak to, they're at war with someone that's mutual, I will ask and fight them. And we can use Karenberg as a sacking settlement. And the reason why we move to this specific point, when we sack it, we'll move closer to Altdorf. So now the eyes are on to Altdorf. We're against two armies. And it's not looking good. But 
We have really low level mages. We've got a pretty low level Wolfric against uh, two full armies here. So we're going to pull out all the cheese in the bag. But uh, let me show you the cheese is good stuff. And what we do is move the mages up so they can't be shot by the towers. Uh, get Wolfric up there as well because he's an absolute tank because we've leveled him up to be so. And then we want to put all our units into one spot because that's effectively where they cannot be shot. Then we use magic and we want to keep using magic. Wasting arrows because that's balance of power. And more magic because it's just good stuff. And then what we want to do is pull up all our units and as well use them uh, when there's no towers there. More magic to hit the metal units, or the armored units. Same again, use the Searing Doom for the armored units. And that summarizes the win. Avoiding the towers where possible, using your units, the best case scenarios. Summon the Elector Counts. Slap Karl Franz back where he belongs, but you can see his army is very low tier. And this is the reason why you take Outdorf to stop his high tier recruitment, as it hinders him greatly. Then Ada comes out of the woodworks, no idea where she came from, but she's got an insanely strong army of pretty much just cavalry. And so the main factors here is we want to make sure to leverage Searing Doom, to, as you see in this battle, get everyone in the corner, pray for the gods that we don't have to restart, Searing Doom, and yep, you guessed it, another Searing Doom, and I'm sure you can probably guess this one, another Searing Doom. Uh, we overcasted this one because there's a lot more targets in it, and that sums up the victory. Quick note about Workins, their buffs stack. Since the level 1, 2, 3, and 4 are different buffs technically, these passives can all stack together. So the three of them uh, that you see on screen will give you 61 armor. So as we just saw, we want them to get Twisted Flesh. So let's get them leveled up by doing hero actions under Karenberg. Next up, we're going to go beat them up with Wolfric, as we want experience on all our mages and Wolfric as well. And as you can imagine, it was super easy. But next up, what we want to make sure to do is get rid of Altdorf because we can no longer fight as many battles as we are because there's just too many threats around us. And so what we need to start doing is taking down Franz's settlements where possible in hopes that somebody else will be taking them. We also spoke with the vampires and got them in more against the Empire as well. So we're going to try and leverage them to try and take out as many settlements from the east as possible. So here's where we try to be proactive. We start taking the fight to them, where is Karenberg, we go to Einhard as well. And obviously the battle's super easy because now we've got a good army. The Wirkins are performing, they can regenerate like drain tank, they can keep healing loads. And we've got a lot of powerful magic. Wolfric's already very strong himself. And so we're in a good situation to start taking on these one versus one fights like this. So Leon comes out with an RKO out of nowhere, hits me and attacks me. With three armies here. So I say screw that. Let's fight it another day. As you can see. I've got an outfit change. And then what we do with Wirkins. Is attack the single entities. Same with Wolfric. Because they're specialists at single entity killing. And then we can use them as well for the cavalry. But the main fundamentals is. Uh, leveraging Searing Doom for the cavalry. And the good thing is. Since we're close to the edge. If they do run away. Uh, they're quite quick. So there's a chance they run off the map. And we don't have to deal with them. And then what we can see is. Their reinforcements are running in thick and fast. I've got a ton of peasants uh, and so simply there is one thing that I thought needed to be done and it's burn them all to death yeah uh yeah, absolutely roasting them all to death especially while they're walking into each other and they give up uh we also use you know burning head as well to chase down as many of them as we possibly can do because we're gonna have to fight them again anyway and as you can see a pyrrhic victory which was exceptionally needed because that could have ended the campaign right then and there so now we take the fight to them again, so we take out Einhardt, fight it real quick, just to beat them up. We raise it, but keep in mind, if I raise anything, I take attrition because I have no settlements. But one thing I wanted to keep in mind, see Nordl and these cheeky buggers are taking everything I'm raising, which is enabling potentially Carl friends to confederate them in the future. So something that was fairly frustrating, but it is what it is. So I use that frustration going to Ubersreich, and I send up all of my single entities. This is the fundamentals of how to play these battles now in the mid-game. You use your single entities, the Wirkins, to drain tank, so basically just fight anything, and they can regenerate HP. Get the mages to use magic on top of the blobs that the Wirkins create. Wolfric has perfect vigor, so when he climbs walls, he doesn't take any uh, fatigue. So he can fight on walls, and he's exceptionally good. In any form of sieges, even if you have Wolfric with a stack of mammoths, you want to take him off the mammoth in a siege scenario because he will actually do significantly more, especially jumping on top of these uh, walls because he's just su such a good fighter in this situation because he is a melee expert, has incredible stats, and is really good. So yeah, we got a quick dub there. Uh, we only lost two people. We definitely took a lot of single entity damage, uh, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And since we do need to regenerate, we go and make sure that we sack it. Otherwise... Uh, I've been in a lot of trouble. So, 
Kyle just won't stop confederating. Really frustrating, even though he's super weak. And we use our mage here to try and figure out what's going on. Uh, it's super useful having the mage so we can scale out the situation so we know him. You know, we need information effectively. Right now, the unknowns, like with what happened with the Praetorian army, I'm going to try and avoid that again just in case because, we, you know, if we can scout, we'll scout. Having that mage in the army would be really useful. But at this stage, you know, a fire mage will do just as much. So I'm perfectly happy with having one mage in here. Uh, but it is very frustrating when Carl Franz just keeps confederating, and you can see I've gone on a bit of a tangent because I'm like, how can Carl Franz, when they are weaker than than the other, uh, you know, uh, Alex Counts, and then want to be confederate about him? It, it, it sort of doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. Uh, and this is the reason why this campaign was so difficult because Carl Franz, you take one settlement, he gets two. You you know, you raise one settlement, he gets two back. So we're going to have to take out Altdorf because he's just confederated it from Hossland. And go back to the previous siege of Antoff, same fundamentals. Uh, but within this one, what we had to do was just use the Wirkins, since we have Wirkins now, they're tanky enough, because uh, you can get like insane melee defense on them. And we offended, it's, you know, sent the single entities up again from the previous sieges we've demonstrated, uh, and then just murder everything. And one of the main factors when it comes to taking down the Empire, it doesn't matter if he has 100 armies. Generally, it doesn't, as long as they are tier 1, tier 0 armies. That is my main consideration when taking down the Altdorf is you, excuse me, taking down uh, Franz is you bit by bit take out his recruitment. That's all I care about. His recruitment is all I care about. And then I'm making fun of the fact that Altdorf has four troops in it. Uh, sometimes it really do be like that. This is the worst part about it. Look, right here. You do not get spear marauders in this settlement for no reason. You can just recruit marauders. So we just start raising tons of settlements, and a massive thing happens. The vampires start colonizing all the settlements that I'm raising in the south. So I decide to start pushing into the north, just deal with that threat here, and try and loop with them in Middenstag as well. So we're pushing into the north to help the vampires in the south. We're taking out uh, Wiseman, and we're going to go for Nordland as well, because they're super weak right now. I don't trust the order resolve, so I fight pretty much everything in this campaign. I don't think I order resolve many things, apart from the beginning. And then you can see here uh, a nice decisive victory, uh, minimal casualties, and we will take the sack on this one because we don't have the movement and we need to heal because Marienberg's around us. And as you can see, uh, Wintertooth have attacked Nordland, so I can kind of like double up, use Throg to help me at the very same. Uh, Throg I haven't killed just yet because there's no point, uh, although he is a victory condition, he generally speaking doesn't do very well. And as with most Norse factions, you can get Confederation Windows because of the fact that they always take terrible fights and the balance of power is determined, well, the strength rank is determined through their armies and the power of their armies, you know, the size of their armies, the amount of armies they have. And generally speaking, Norska has, like, very little. Unfortunately, my vassal betrays me, gets confederated by the Kal friends. And this is also the reason why we keep Throg alive, because you can still help me. You know, we're still technically Norskans. And I added this clip in because... Why not show the Hermes the uh, the Roman helmet? If you're wondering about the helmet, I got it for Rome Total War Remastered. I said to my girlfriend that I would stream with it loads. I didn't. She's still mad about it. But we've got the vampires. We're leveling them. They've taken out a lot of stuff here. And you can see the vampires are actually really annoyed at me. For some reason, because I've, you know, I take a settlement, I raise it. They, they take it that turn. And I'm trespassing. And I'm raiding as well. Because I need to do it for replenishment. And so it sucks constantly, but one thing that you'll often find in this specific campaign, it is all about diplomacy. Diplomacy is king in this one, surprisingly. The reason I say diplomacy is king is mainly because of the fact that I can't physically do enough without the help of somebody else. So for example, Malekith, Thraw, all these people are super useful. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to go towards Marienburg to stop them effectively snowballing to the point where they're going to be a really good confederation target. And also on top of that one, uh, Britonia is quite weak still. So if we can go towards Britonia and put pressure onto them, that is going to be really useful in this campaign. So hopefully we can move towards getting like a military alliance and then we'll know where Throg is. So that in the end, uh, before we get to, um, you know, the allegiance of the gods, we can um, get all the things finished. Because if we can basically tick all of the boxes here, then we don't need to be we don't need to worry about um, uh, fighting a chaos, I believe. With Marienburg being on the last elements, we take advantage of this fact, and we use our troops in the trees as always. Use a bit of sea fang, bit of magic, and honestly, this summarizes these battles really nicely. But a disaster strikes. My fire mage is being shot at, and if you're not unaware, fire magic is my most potent tool at this stage. Now it's later on in the game. 
Runs off with 200 health. I am not putting them on a horse ever again because they're just a bigger target. Much easier to shoot. And honestly, if that mage dies, it could spell disastrous for the campaign in general as it's basically what's carrying me through 99% of these battles is genuinely my mage doing tons of damage. Once again, Leon takes offense that I exist and I'm breathing still, so he sends tons of armies uh, towards me to attack me. Since I have the Fire Mage still, we should be good to do Burning Head and do all that juicy damage against them. Uh, but we take kind of like a modified Dwarf box formation here, and it's absolutely glorious. Because when we're outnumbered, you want to take formations like this, leverage the fact that you've got single entity killers, and then use Searing Doom on any of the cavalry that come after you, and you should be fine. One of the most important factors when it comes to these battles that I'm doing is I'm always being attacked on my end turn and so I get my entire army replenishment because it comes back to my turn and as you can see Reichland's of course confederated guilt as well. This is the reason why you have to just keep rushing him, keep rushing him, keep rushing him, pressure him, pressure him, pressure him because this always happens. These confederates are crazy and as you can see uh, these guys are all getting ready to attack me and I am trying to focus my attention on taking out what I can and a massive thing happens. You can see Rakath is starting to come over as well which is really huge for the campaign because we just need to leverage anybody that can take these settlements. Literally anyone can have them, just not the Empire. So we siege Marenberg to get these buggers out of here. And it should be, once again, just generating experience so we can heal the Weirkins from fighting this as well. And as you can see, the battle is not difficult at all. We didn't lose a single person. And we can easily take these guys out. And we don't want to take this element. It could have been an idea to establish the outpost uh, and replenish, but we'll have to wait an entire turn while we wait to abandon it. And one thing, one really funny thing happens. Throg takes Marenberg. Marenberg says, no thank you, I'm going to take my home back. So this poor sword's outside Corone, so we kill him with a lightning strike, take the warhorse off the mage, because we've learned from that lesson, and then we jump in to the battle. This summarizes the, the fundamentals of the battle uh, pretty much nicely. Uh, we managed to clutch it out, and my Norskan Warhound is uh, is here to congratulate me. And uh, yeah, she's she's absolutely adorable. She's got for her. I love her to bits. And we managed to take down um, Corone at tier 5, meaning we have tier 4, which gives us access to war mammoths, so this is where the entire campaign changes. Now we can start building armies that can kick butt. So now we recruit the additional Wirkin and we level them up for Vicious Assault because we want to have the melee attack. We also get these mages as scouts and uh, we want to check out what Britannia is doing and oh my goodness. Uh, a nice tasty surprise for me, so we've set Wolfric in front of Karoon trying to ambush somebody. One of the poor buggers takes the bait and we absolutely slaughter him. So the Master Beta becomes the baited. These guys send four armies my way and you can see my armies weaken because I'm trying to recruit mammoths so they attack me at quite literally the perfect time. So as I'm sure you can imagine, peasants actually really don't like fire. Uh, that's one thing that I've consistently learned fighting Britonia. Fire is pretty darn good at getting these guys demoralized and we take the win because we use single entities and the fire magic and they just get absolutely slaughtered. Uh, but the main factor is here we can now start recruiting our mammoths again which is huge. So we get ourselves some more mammoths to get the mammoth stack. We get a defensive alliance and then I think to myself might as well make it military, why not? This does actually change the way this is played massively because you can see now Throt is taking settlements away from the empire. So I have friends actually helping me take down settlements. And while I'm getting my mammoth stack, I can't really do much. Uh, but we definitely need to get the mammoth stack before we move out to try and fight anything else. But now we've got Throt on our side, taking down settlements at the same time. There is a potential. There's a bit of influence onto the old chaos. Sword of Cain's owned by uh, probably Tyrion in fairness. Marathi is doing quite well for herself, which is the reason why I think if I just send my hero over to here, we'll spot her. Uh, the reason why I probably want to do that... Wow, strength rank 17 as well. We've got a really good strength rank. The reason why I want to make sure to uh, meet her is because I can influence her decisions and basically become besties with Marathi. And she gives tons of money as well. Like, you can really milk Marathi for so, so much money. And now we've met Malekith and he is quite literally our victory condition. So we need to make sure to give him as many gifts, make him as happy as possible as he has 55 settlements. And he'll give us the victory condition of the settlements we need. And what if I do this? What happens? Uh, Non-aggression pact. Oh, Malekith, you're so generous. As you can see, Malakith absolutely hates us, so we're going to want to declare war on targets on the donut that we're not going to fight anyway. So we're just going to get free diplomacy with him over time. And the guys that we declared war on, as you can see, are exceptionally weak, and they usually are weak in pretty much every campaign I've ever seen. So now we're going to take on the mammoth task of taking on the Empire. Do you get it? We have uh, a mammoth stack. 
Okay, moving on. So we're going to sack this element and then take this one because we can take Marenberg down without you know without raising it. We can abandon it ourselves and take it and replenish within it. So here we're doing the daily. Please, Malekith, like me. And then also, same to Throt. We're going to get a trade agreement, even though we're going to abandon this element, but it gives diplomacy. Might as well. And then we're going to go attack Einhardt. We're going to start taking down the Empire settlements once again. You can see a Bretonian army right next to it, so hopefully they'll colonize it, as it really doesn't matter if any of the Bretonians take these settlements because they can't confederate them. This sums up battles from now on, and then we're going to go speak to Malekith, trying to declare war on people for diplomacy, but he's a strong independent man. But next up, what we want to do is... Uh, we'll take Altdorf again and take that. So taking Altdorf enables us to research this tech tree, and it increases the weapon strength by 25% of quite literally every single unit. So our mammoth stack gets even stronger. As you can see, we've got Throg and Throg running rampant around the Empire. So we've definitely got them weakened and on their knees. So we just need to keep applying the pressure and ensuring that we can make sure that they don't recover, take anyone else that we can, and make sure there's no good Confederation targets. So to break down what the goals is and what we need to do now, we're going to need to keep using Throg to attack the Empire in the north. We need Throg to keep attacking Empire in the south. And I'm going to need to take Altdorf for the pre-mentioned buff to my Mammoths, because you can get them to like 900 weapon strength. It's absolutely insane. But as long as we keep the pressure up here, uh, we should be absolutely okay. We just have to make sure to leverage diplomacy with Malekith, keep making him happy, eventually getting a you know, diplomacy with military alliance with him, and then the campaign will start looking significantly better because once again if we lose we have to restart so i'm really cautious about any move that i am making now because i have to clutch this out because this is the best run we've ever had so far and we want to keep the momentum going up so we grab ourselves out to get the buff nice and easy dub and then now the empire is weakened we've got them finally in a good position to take them down and the Dowie just say, Do not shame your ancestors this day. Unfortunately. We're going to have to deal with the dwarves as well. Uh, but the good news is we've got the Empire on the back foot. We're starting to converge. We're using Throg. We're using Throt. As you can see, we're taking over this entire area, using our allies, and it is working out a charm. So Malekith is once again asking for our support. At least not really, but we declare war on people for him just to get some diplomacy, give him a bit of gifts, give his mum some gifts as well because she absolutely loves it. He will give, since they're allies, I will get diplomacy with Malekith for giving Marathi uh, gifts. And especially since there's a weak economy, it's a really easy way of getting diplomacy for both of them. So I'm going to attack the Silament. I'm going to sack it to make sure that Throck can take it. Uh, it should be an easy auto resolve. And also what we want to do is leverage Throck as well to try and take the Fort Soil there. Because I'm not currently at war with the Dwarves and I do not want to go anywhere near them. So we're just going to tell them to take them. Because we're allies, I can give them commands to take these elements with the green things you can see. Not everything goes to plan, unfortunately Jiraiter attacks Throt, but um, hopefully keeps his eyes on the Empire because Kalfranz is down to a few settlements, he has very little confederation targets, so he's super weak, he performs miracles all the time, I'm just very hopeful I can fully kill him. Take action to my own hands, I take down the fort myself, get lucky pathing with the raising so the dwarves aren't near me, and as we can see, you know, this was once a thriving area of human civilization, the Empire was doing great before... You know, the boys, me and the rats came over, and you can see that Throt has taken a significant portion of the Empire now. So Boris Defiant, as always, brings back Nuln for some reason. They have very little settlements, I don't know why they brought this back. Uh, and then Gelt takes uh, Dotton back, and then we go murder him. And then we get a really fortunate raise pathing, which puts us right next to uh, the battle versus the very final army the Empire has. Yes! Yes! We have to fight it! We have to fight! This is the death of the Empire! This is the death of the Empire! After that battle, we kicked his butt and the little rascal ran away, so we're gonna go and chase him. I challenge you, Boris, to bring it to a duel. I am Wolfric the Wanderer. We've done it, boys. One down, two to go. We'll quickly go fight the poor buggers that Boris brought back, but we need to raise them for the Serpent, uh, as we need to get to uh, level 3 Serpent Favor, as it's a victory condition as well. So we're able to get buddies with Malekith enough to get a defensive alliance. We're now working on military alliance, because that's what you need for the victory condition. And we're going to might as well use Marathi as well. She's got a terrible economy somehow. Uh, we're going to give a crap load of money to get the diplomacy with both of them up. So now what we do is yoink 10k off Malekith, because once you've got a good alliance, you can. And then what we're doing now is we need to take on Leon, We've got to kill him. He is now our primary target, and all our focus should be purely on him now. Randomly, Malekith is in the middle of the empire, so we might as well use him while he's here. 
And we asked for a military alliance and get it, which is honestly absolutely huge because as you can see, he's covered all the victory conditions when it comes to the requirement of settlements. And this is effectively what we were doing this entire time. He secures our late game settlements. And then now what we need to do is just deal with the rest of the victory conditions, which is the maintain units and the raising enough, killing Bretonia, killing Throg now. The campaign's looking really good. So we find Leon hiding away at Blackstone Post with a terrible army. So this is the reason why as well, I'm going to say it again, getting rid of the recruitment elements is amazing. And as we can see, easy victory, and we're going to raise towards the Serpent because now we've got our victory conditions. Uh, the majority of our victory conditions are now met, it's just we need to make sure that we can have enough settlements to raise before Malekith takes over the world. So now we managed to convince Malekith to beat the Bretonians up as well. And do you remember when I said it's not a problem if Paravon takes the Empire settlements? Well, this is what happened. Um, yeah, he... He's got a lot more settlements, and if you're wondering what the map looks like, uh, Malakith has completely dominated the donut, and uh, this is the reason why he's going to be a useful tool. Now it's become an all-you-can-eat buffet with the Bretonians. Malarathi is having uh, having fun, and Rakath, as you can see with Malakith, is taking on the right side of the Bretonians. And as well, I am at war with some of the elves, so I really don't want to go into the east side of the map. So if Malakith can deal with that, that's brilliant. I'm going to go on the left side uh, to avoid the wood elves where possible. As you can see now, it's pretty much past what I can do. Uh, like the Purple Tide that the Dark Elves are, they are completely taking over Britannia now because since they've taken down uh, the Donut, there's pretty much nothing for them to do. So Britannia is their next obvious target. And as you can see, they are completely spreading over the screen. They've got about a million armies. So now we can keep fighting Britannians and we actually sack this one so we can kill the army that's next to it so they can't colonize any of the Britannian settlements. And then what we want to keep doing is just leveraging ourselves to go take out Bretonian settlements where possible and allowing Malakith to do the very same. All that's left to do is murder the rest of the Bretonians. It's nice and easy because they have no armies, they have no strength. All we do is just take candy from a baby and kill as many Bretonians as we possibly can do. And all we need to do now is just keep the pressure up and we'll have exterminated the Bretonians. Boys, some said it couldn't be done. Some said it wasn't possible. One down. Two down. Two down. One to go. So, after 100 hours of just pure pain, we get some good RNG. Throg is right in front of us. He is the last person we have to take down, and we're trying to decide if we do it right now. But keep in mind in Warhammer 2, the way it works, if you confederate a target, their entire garrison you confederate will be exceptionally weak. And so anything that attacks them will 100% easily defeat the garrison, and I will have to start this campaign from turn 1 again, if we lose even a garrison battle. Marenberg is nowhere to be seen. I'm not at war with that elf, so they're not going to attack this. Throm owns the majority of this. There's nothing to the north of me because it's owned. We own everything here. Yeah, we own all of this, so it's a safe confederation, I think. We decide the time is now, we attack Throg, we bite the bullet, and we confederate him. You can see I'm pretty scared, because who knows what RNG might happen to make me lose the campaign. And then what we do is go raise Marienburg, so we can trigger the sequence of attacking the army of the Hound, and the same for army of the Crow. The army of the Hound was super easy to beat. So the crow is also super easy. There are no match for the veterans of the mammoths that I have. If you weren't aware, I was absolutely sweating bullets during this moment because I was just so worried that everything I worked towards, this was it. This was my one chance to actually prove the impossible is possible. A no loss Wolfric challenge on Legendary Very Hard. And the reality is coming to fruition. We've arrived at the final battle, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and by the way, just a disclaimer, I get extremely hyper, and uh, I go a bit nuts, honestly. It, you know, it's something that I've worked towards for such a long time, and uh, I'm just going to let my live reaction voice uh, take over for this one, so I hope, I hope you enjoy. The Challenger of the Eagle will perish! For we are Wolfric the Wanderer, and we go where we please! Let's go! Oh no, hold on, I'm gonna have to take the emotes off because you're gonna make it lag. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that off otherwise the stream will lag. <laughs> this is too many emotes. <laughs> I can't have the emotes flying on screen. Oh my god, we're doing it! Oh, we're doing it, boys.
Oh my god, we're finally here. It's happening. Come here, you little bugger. Some champion you are. Get him, boys. Shake him, boys. Follow us from Norse current in the fleet to lead the end of champion. Some. Come at me, bro. You cannot defeat my army. Alright, in the corner. Did we get in the corner? Still on the counts as one! Get in the corner. Grook Deathmaker. We'll see who's making death this day. Mammoths? <laughs> Fool! You should have bring a war mammoth. Bring a real mammoth. Not a feral one. Onwards to victory! Look at the undisciplined mammoths crumble. Nom 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 nom. Nom 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 nom. Now that's a tasty treat. We've only got to done it, boys! We've only got to done it, boys. Is the brave mammoths that fought back the silly foes. Champion! Azeroth's in need of your help! The wounds of Azeroth, champion! You actually have to fight him. Oh god, you actually have to fight him, maybe. Reject the true ever chosen! Let's go! Woo! Oh my god, boys! We did it! Oh my god. Oh my god, we managed to finish Warfreak without losing. I have been doing this challenge for so long. Let's go to my videos. Go to videos. Uh, recent highlights. Uh, broadcast, excuse me. I have been doing this challenge for 21 days. I've been doing it non-stop for 21 days. I feel like doing the outro on the screen I saw the most as we clicked the start campaign a lot was appropriate. I just wanted to thank Legend of Total War for inspiring me due to his no-loss high elf campaign. I saw that and wanted to put my own spin on it. And Norska seemed like an insane challenge in a no-loss scenario. He's truly an inspiration to old creators and you alike. This is a collection of my favourite gaming memories I wanted to immortalise into a video so I can look back time after time in the future to see, you know, to, you know, to remind myself about it. And I'm excited to see what I can do in Immortal Empires and Warhammer 3. I'm honestly extremely proud of myself for completing this campaign. Content creators, friends of mine, honestly thought I was mad for playing Wolfric for over 100 hours without playing anything else. But... All thing that matters is you enjoyed. I also stream on Twitch if you're interested in watching insane challenges like this. I always end up doing random stuff like this. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye for now.